John Bosco, also known as Don Bosco, was the youngest of three boys, born into a family of farmers and shepherds, on August 16, 1815 in the northern Italian countryside, surrounding the city of Turin. His father, Francesco, died when the young John Bosco was only two years old, leaving his wife, Margarita, to raise three boys by herself. One day, a traveling illusionist came to town, and the young John Bosco learned the tricks he saw. Later, he would capture the attention of street youth with those tricks, while also teaching them the faith. Leaving home at 12 years old, he got a job working in a vineyard. He met St. John Cafasso, a priest, who helped him get an education, and later to become a priest. After visiting a prison, and seeing young boys, aged 12 to 18 incarcerated there, Father John decided to devote his life to the care and education of the poor street boys. He gave them a place to live and play, taught them the faith, and found good jobs for them as apprentices. He founded in 1859, the Society of St. Francis de Sales, which became known as the Salesians of Don Bosco. He also founded in 1872, the Daughters of Our Lady, Help of Christians, known as the Salesian Sisters of Don Bosco. John Bosco died on January 31, 1888. He was canonized in 1934 by Pope Pius XI, whom the pontiff knew as a young priest. My sons, in my long experience, very often, I have to be convinced of this great truth. It is easier to become angry, than to restrain oneself, and to threaten a boy than to persuade him. Yes indeed, it is more fitting to be persistent in punishing our own impatience and pride, than to correct the boys. We must be firm but kind, and be patient with them. This was the method that Jesus used with the apostles. He put up with their ignorance and roughness, and even their infidelity. He treated sinners with kindness and affection, that caused some to be shocked, others to be scandalized, and still others to hope for God's mercy. And so he bade us to be gentle, and humble of heart. A letter to the Salesians. Article 3. The salvation of the soul depends greatly upon the time of our youth. But some of you may object. If we begin to serve God now, we shall become sad and depressed. This is not true. He who serves the devil is miserable, even if he pretends to be happy, because in his heart, he never ceases to hear the reproach, you are unhappy because you are the enemy of God. Who was more affable? or more cheerful than St. Aloysius Gonzaga? Who was more happy and joyful than St. Philip Neri? And yet we know that their lives were entirely spent in the practice of every virtue. Courage then, my dear friends. Employ your time virtuously, and I assure you that your heart will always be happy and contented. As a consequence, you will experience how sweet and pleasing it is to serve the Lord. The Companion of Youth and Practice of Religious Duties, Part 1 Things Needed for a Young Person to Become Virtuous 1847. Article 2. Fleeing Bad Companions. There are three kinds of companions. Some are good, others are bad, some are not completely bad but neither are they good. You can be with the first group, and it will do you good. You can deal with the last group, when there is a need, without becoming too familiar. You have to keep away absolutely from the bad ones. But who are these bad companions? Pay attention, and you will understand who they are. All those boys who are not ashamed of using obscene language in your company, or dubious or scandalous words, murmuring, lies, perjury, curses, blasphemy, or who try to keep you away from church, or ignore your duty. These are bad companions, ministers of Satan, whom you should avoid like the plague, and the devil himself. Ah, my dear friends, I beg you with tears in my eyes, to flee and abhor companions like these. The Companion of Youth and Practice of Religious Duties, Part 1 Things That Young People Should Flee From Most, 1847 Article 6 Reading and the Word of God A body without food gets sick, and dies. And the same thing happens to our soul, if we do not give it, it's food. The Word of God is food, nourishment for the soul. Meaning, sermons, explanations of the Gospel, and the Catechism. So, make every effort to be in church when you should be, pay close attention while there, and then try to apply the things they offer you, to your state in life. It is very important that you attend catechism lessons. It is no good saying to yourself, I have already been promoted for Holy Communion, because even then the soul needs food, just like the body needs food. And if you deny the soul this food you put yourselves at risk of very serious harm. The Companion of Youth and Practice of Religious Duties, Part 1 Things Needed for a Young Person to Become Virtuous, 1847 Mass is the offering and sacrifice of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is offered and distributed under the species of consecrated bread and wine. 
Understand well, my dear children, that when you assist at Holy Mass, it is as if you saw the Divine Savior, leaving Jerusalem, and carrying the cross up to Calvary, where he was crucified, after the most barbarous torments, and shedding his blood to the last drop. The priest renews this same sacrifice, when he celebrates, Holy Mass, with the difference however, that the sacrifice on Calvary was painful to Jesus, and accompanied by the shedding of blood. While that of the Mass, is unbloody, that is without the shedding of blood. As one cannot imagine anything more holy, more precious, than the body, blood, soul and divinity of Jesus Christ, so, while you are assisting at Mass, you ought to be convinced that you are performing a great and holy act, which redounds to the glory of God, and the good of your soul. At Mass, Jesus Christ comes in person to apply to each one of us, in particular, the merits of that most adorable blood, shed for us on the cross, at Calvary. This ought to inspire us, with the greatest reverence for Holy Mass, together with a lively desire of assisting at it worthily. It is, however, no uncommon thing to see young people willfully distracted at Holy Mass, behaving without decorum, attention, or respect, often fidgeting and looking about. They renew the crucifixion of Jesus, giving scandal to their companions, and causing harm to our holy religion. The Companion of Youth and Practice of Religious Duties Part 2 Practical Way of Assisting with Profit at Holy Mass